All right, so California's Democratic primary and the sham of elections. The recent California Democrats state convention denied uh, Dianne Feinstein an endorsement for a fifth full term, although the party machine and her bank account are still in her favor. There are signs of dissent and youthful unrest among Democrats and not just in California, though anyone hoping to reform the party must first break the death grip of the old guard. Reformers also will inherit clever partisan maneuvers that have become quicksand and Machiavellian inspirations that became institutional iron traps. Uh, let's see, shortly before California's Prop 14 appeared on the ballot in June 2010, the topic of the top two primary system came up at a dinner party where I was a guest. An active member of the Democratic Party expressed enthusiasm saying it would make it tougher for third parties to distract voters. Those were her words. If you're a third party person, if you're a progressive, if you have ideas that are different from the establishment, you're a distraction. That's according to the California Democratic Party, allegedly one of the most progressive states in the country. That's what we're told. But this is what their Democratic establishment thinks. You're a distraction. If leading Democrats in California really want to make elections fair and democratic, they don't. They would endorse and campaign in earnest for instant runoff voting or ranked choice voting. So why don't they? Kind of a rhetorical question. What do you think, Tim? <laughs> I think, I think I mean, look, the, the 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 California Democratic uh do when they when they uh when they shit it on single payer, man, I was done with them. Right? Like like like, oh, we got the perfect opportunity. And then what do they do? They just threw, they just say, hey, we can't we can't get it done. And then there was a lot of distraction being done to try to mitigate their decision not to go forward with it. So like I, I don't know much about California politics other than uh, the the establishment folks that are in the house. Uh, those folks are the ones that are, you know, slowing down progression. And Diane Feinstein, dude, uh, I, I, dude, we need new blood. We, how about some blood? How about a person with actual blood in their veins? Like a person who actually in some way can relate. Tim, Tim you know what, man? I, <laughs> I hate to cut you off here, but you're being a little ageist. Just because Dianne Feinstein is 492 years old doesn't mean she doesn't have blood anymore. You have no scientific <laughs> evidence to back that up. I think she's got fracking oil running through her veins. <laughs> <laughs> yes! For the win. Love it. Thank you, brother. All right, please continue. <laughs> no, man, I'm serious, man. I, I just think it's, I think it's sad, man. What, what, you, you know, and you're right. California does have the reputation of being this progressive, forward-thinking state. And then when you start peeling away and looking deeper at it, you're like, oh man, these guys told us the, the the corporate Democrat line all the way, man. It's like neoliberalism. And and uh, um, I don't know, man. What do you think about? I'm gonna ask you a question, uh, Ro Connor. I know he's California. I know he's a senator. I've interviewed him. Um, he is a straight shooter on some issues, some other issues I have questions about, but you you know him better than I do, being as you're in California. What do you think? I I like Roe. I, overall, I like Roe. I see him battle with having to play the game uh, for his own political future and standing up for what he believes in. I, I see him battling with that. Um, has he been perfect in that battle? Absolutely not. Um, you know who has been perfect in that battle? Freaking nobody. Nobody ever. Um, you know, when it comes to the big issues, Roe is for the policies I'm for. Um, you know, I'm not here to say the guy's flawless. He's not. By his own admission, he's not. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think he's one of the good guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, he has yet to prove me otherwise. Some of his endorsements have been disappointing. Uh, some of his approaches have been disappointing, but, uh, you know, when it comes to policy, when it comes to the policies, this guy's really fighting for net neutrality, uh, money out of politics. He really stuck his chin out on that one. Yeah, he did. Um, you know, um, single payer. Um, he's really condemning the Democrats when they go along with the establishment. Uh, I think he's still one of the people that's in the right corner. Uh, so I do like Roe now getting to the California democratic party as a whole. I mean, this is one of those things. They are notorious for screwing over the opposition. They did it to Jaffe. They told Jaffe, hey, these are the signatures you need. For anyone not in the know, I know pretty much all you guys do know this that watch this show, but Jaffe's the guy running against Pelosi. He's trying to primary out Pelosi. Um, Jaffe was told he had to get these amount of delegate signatures. He got it. He played by the rules. And then what happened to him? Um, they told him, oh, wait, no, you needed to get all this other stuff. All these other delegates we never even told you about. 
Uh, you needed to get these signatures, and you didn't have them, so screw you. That's why he's suing them. Uh, single payer. The nurses were told, worry about this in your single payer bill. Lur worry about X, Y, Z, and we'll take care of the rest. Well, the nurses worried about X, Y, Z, and what did they do? They said, hey, the rest isn't in this bill, so uh, this bill sucks. You suck. Uh, that's what they did. They screwed over Maria Estrada, as Kimmy pointed out. Uh, Maria Estrada is prim trying to primary out Rendon, who, by the way, screwed this state out of single payer. Oh, and when the nurses protested this, what were they told at the DNC? They were told to shut the fuck up and get out. That is verbatim what they were told. They were told to shut the fuck up and get out. And at the California Democrat Convention, uh, I didn't go to the convention itself because I'm a fan of not vomiting. Uh, Jimmy, J Jimmy did go to the convention itself. I was lucky. I just got to go to our comedy show, and I just got to go <laughs> to the, uh, the burner after parties. I was happy as a clam not having to go through that establishment bullshit earlier. Uh, yeah. But Jimmy went to it. He covered it. Um, and he talked about a, a segment where uh, David Dayan was speaking. When he talked about the problem of money in politics, you could hear crickets. When he talked about Russia, people got to their feet. Uh, priorities are backwards. This party is pretty much dead in the water the way I see it. And it's one of those things. There are so many things in place. Am I against the hijacking of the party? No, I'm not against it. I just recognize the super long road that it is. And it's one of those scenarios. That's why I'm leaning more towards third party. Because, yes, both approaches are a long, hard road. Both approaches are going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. But it's like one of those things. There's a lot of us. And we're trying to break into this castle. And while we're trying to break into this castle, they're pouring molten lava on us. And we're getting flipped <laughs> off by trolls that have I'm with her t-shirts on. Um, man, maybe it'd be more productive if we all just gathered together, stopped getting burned by molten lava, and built our own freaking castle. That's why I was at the Convergence Conference. That's why I was there when we presented the, the, Bernie, um, the petitions to Bernie. And Tim, you were there too. We were yeah. both there. Uh, and I really wish Bernie would have signed on to that. I don't know why he did it. I'm hoping he's playing some kind of three-dimensional chess that I'm not aware of. But, uh, <laughs> but man, I, I really think at this point the Democrats are just beyond, uh, beyond hijacking and beyond saving because they have too many things in place to avoid that from happening. And this Truth Dig article points to that. The behavior of the DCCC points to that. The behavior of the Democrats in California point to that. Uh, how many more slaps in the face can progressive take before we realize – this is just a done deal. We have to do something else. Either start a new viable third party, green enter, stick to movements exclusively, become a voting block that can't be ignored. But we got to do something. Playing ball with the Democrats ain't cutting it. Tim, what do you think? Wow, brother. Yeah, I, you know, I support the I support third party. You know, I do. I, I think that we need a third party. I think we need viable options to the duopoly, and that's where we're at. And if we if we uh, we spend all that time trying to reform the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, we're not building anything else, right? So that's why I was there at the Convergence. That's why I support the People's Independent Party, um, the Democratic Socialists, uh, the Green Party, of course. Hell, I even take a look at Libertarians if they get me one that's not crazy. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm for more inclusive. I'm, more, I'm for more including more voices. I think that the uh, I've been told that there really is no, there no longer is a progressive movement. I think that's not true. I think what has happened is been co-opted to a large extent by the fake resistance. So they're the ones who have stepped in front. They've taken our buzzwords. Hell, they even taken the, the term progressive. So like that's why I don't like. I'm just Tim Black, you know, and and glad to meet you. But I I think that we we have to do what's in the interest of our children. That's the way I always look at things. What's going to be best for my kids? More options will be best. <laughs> We can't we can't be uh, held at the mercy of Democrats who, in fact, Democrats don't even know if they want to be Democrat or Republican. Like they don't even they don't fucking know, man. They don't come on. You know, I watched well, the tape recently. More and more blurred every day. Yeah, I mean, dude, dude, I just did before before this show with you. I just made a video about the uh, damn it. It's about the vote. Uh, to reverse Dodd Frank, to like to to further you know peel away Dodd Frank in order to help the banks, and I'm like, dude, look who look who voted on that shit, Kim, uh, Jim Kane, um, uh, what's his what's his uh, bastard, uh, Doug Jones, 
I mean, the notorious asshole in Alabama who was supposed to be, oh, great, we got him instead of Warren Moore. voted for further Wall Street deregulation. That's your resistance. That's it. That's it, bruh. And who's complaining about it? Well, we got Senator Elizabeth Warren. Hey, Chuck Schumer's complaining about it. I'm like, oh, shit. I hate Chuck, but I got to say, thank you, Chuck. Keep complaining. But, but actions this- speak louder than words, Tim. Mm-hmm. I mean, Chuck, Chuck Schumer also could have, like, called on the Democrats. He could have, like, instilled something to call on the Democrats to not vote on it. He didn't do that. He didn't. So, yeah, he's voting against it himself to show face. But as the minority leader, there's other steps he could have taken uh, to prohibit it from moving forward. He didn't take any of those steps intentionally. Window dressing to look the fame, like I said, fame. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I, I, dude, if we if we stay with these guys, if we think we're going to reform these guys without cutting off their source of money, psh, they they've proven, man. They've proven time and time again, Ron. They they'd rather win. They'd rather lose than than have a Bernie Bernie or progressive in their office. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip from Get Your News On with Ron, the world's first viewer curated streaming news show. What does that mean? That means I log on to a stream and people tweet me articles over on Twitter at Ron Placone, or they use our Reddit subsection, which is just Get Your News On with Ron over on Reddit. And that's how we build the show. I'm seeing all these articles for the first time. We are literally getting our news on together. Follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone so you can participate. And this show streams live every Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please do tune in. If you want to support this show, you can do so over on patreon.com slash romplacone, where for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts every week, exclusive videos, free tickets to shows when I'm performing in your town, and more for as low as a dollar a month. Please do consider it. Thank you so much for your support. This has been Get Your News On with Ron.